The Community Coinage of Griqua Land by Dr. Morgan Carroll. Uh, this is often a very controversial topic that used to be over the last 100 years where many of the numismatic folk believed that some this was coinage and the others believed it was tokens. This presentation should help clarify those that wish to get a greater understanding as to why it's a coin. Historical understanding and significance. The London Missionary Society commenced uh, the late 1700s. A, they started looking into Africa and sending their missionaries there. And the missionary station uh, out there started in 1801 by Reverend Anderson. Then a Reverend John Campbell in 1813 uh, came out to Africa. And in most of his accounts and minutes, uh, he also wrote a book on his uh, journeys to Africa, he spoke about coinage and the possibility of uh, introducing some coinage to help with trade and create a medium. Uh, at the time, there wasn't much going on and there wasn't many coinage available. At that time, um, beads and other similar things were even readily accepted. In context, the area of Griqualand was owned by the Griqo people in, and they had their own sovereignty and it was not controlled by the Cape Colony uh, or Great Britain at the time. The significance of actually making a change in this from a token to actually being recognized as the first coinage of South Africa would then reclassify many of the books previously written and the understandings of current historical documents per se, to make this the first coinage of South Africa, as did C. L. Engelbrecht in his book Geld in South Africa, Money in South Africa, that was written in 1987. As per the map attached, you can see where the Griqualand or Griqualand was located. It was a pretty central and very remote area, early 1800s. And uh, to actually get there, it was on horseback and by uh, ox wagon. The role of the London Missionary Society at the time was to educate the Griqualand people and to bring religion to Africa. Coins or token. So the coins uh, that were minted or tokens that were minted came in silver and copper. The ones that you can find are a quarter, a half, a five and a ten. The five and the ten are in silver, and the quarter and a half are in copper. Most tokens were made from a low base material, and it was usually made by a company that sought to advertise. Um, this was a missionary society. They received donations, and they have to work quite careful with the money that they received. Uh, they had no need to advertise their missionary station. The objective was to create a, a monetary medium for that area and the surrounding areas at the time. Now, silver, most tokens aren't made in silver, um, and that has an intrinsic value. In terms of the denominations, um, they at first seem to be a little bit abstract to the normal circulation money at the time, which was in pence, sterling currency and it seemed a little bit uh, odd and you'll see later on many personal people and collectors and numismatics uh, referred to them as uh, different kinds of tokens because they couldn't really understand why they were in denominations of prominently a five and a ten in silver in terms of creating and understanding and determining uh, coinage or tokens we follow the laws of parsimony and laws of parsimony, if you did a bit of research, are used in scientific understandings and they work on the probabilities of what we know and we reduce the assumptions. Um, and if you went with that law of parsimony, you would be able to easily identify that it would not be seen as a token, but rather as a coinage. The Griqualand people had their own sovereignty, they were autonomous. They had their own ruling 
monarchy. They had their own established rules and policies, and they had their own governance at the time. And so they were very much independent. And as such, it seemed quite likely that the LMS would support the Greekers, and in so doing, the introduction of having their own monetary means just seemed quite logical at the time. The anthology report in March 2017, where I, myself, and Anne Stewart underwent an investigation in London, uh, went through the archives, revealed uh, and substantiated many of the unknown facts. Anthology report findings. So what we found in archives was that there was a committee formed back in January 1816. There was monies allocated for coinage in July 1816. They were minted in England from October to December 1816, these coins. The South Archives reference coinage. Many of the, where they've written tokens in or pieces was uh, struck through in the notes. Great Britain underwent the Great Recoinage Act of 1816 due to recent wars, Napoleonic Wars, as well as other various wars, and Queen Elizabeth wanted to do reform and bring everybody back in line with using their own currency. And that would be one of the reasons why the Griqualand, uh, the Missionary Society decided not to put a denomination on there or a currency symbol and such because it would be in conflict of what the, the Queen wanted and that would have been major repercussions as such. The first arrival of the coins, Brickle coins to South Africa was in the first half of 1817. At the time, the Rekengeld or the accounting money was in Rick's dollar, which was paper money, but they did not support lower denomination in change. The reasons for the denominations, it aligned with the Cape Book accounting currencies of skillings and Rick's dollars. And hence you had that five and a 10, and then you had a quarter and a half. In summary, Currency suggested to be Greekers, the small g or the small denominations of Rekengeld change, as discussed earlier. Now, the reason why we say a small g when Anne and myself were in the archives, we noted that there was in very uh, faint writing a d which was struck through, a small d, and then there was a g next to some of the notations of exchange or monies and we suggested further on should people want to really find out if it was a uh, the currency was called greek was or or it was uh, called the lower change of rakes dollar etc they could actually continue and uh, go through the accounting books which we never had the chance or opportunity to um, further investigate at the time in terms of establishing if it was a coinage or a token, well, the intrinsic metal value would, uh, it's hard to imagine that uh, a token would be issued in silver, although there were in the past some that were in silver, but uh, for the London Missionary Society, for them to actually fork out 200 pounds at that time was a huge amount of money. I think uh, it was supportive of uh, the Griqua land becoming its own autonomy. The South Archives LMS Coinage Committee, which was established and is in the archives, clearly uh, discuss about coinage. Most of the samples that we have found or I have uh, examined of these coins have been in VF, XF, and very hard to imagine very few of them being in mint state, and uh, which indicates that uh, they must have been circulated um, whether it was part of a group of all kinds of denominations, licorice all sorts in a bundle or make up a transaction, one would not really know per se, but um, they definitely have seen wear and tear um, and it's very conducive to understand that that was been in a pocket or part of change at some point in time. The LMS members distributed uh, it was suggested that it be received in wages, and I'm sure in the accounting documents there would be more of that information found as to how they were received or paid. We also know that the coins did arrive in early 1817 with the lower and higher end de denominations. It's suspected that there are obviously were two other further copper coins of maybe one and a half or two and a half or one or two. We didn't explore that further. 
but many of the accounts of the records indicate that they, these coins arrived in 1815. That is not the case. They arrived early 1817. Frequent questions and answers. Many assumptions were made that these pieces were meant to be used as day labor hours. They were five and ten purely because the laborers had ten fingers. This is not the case, uh, which was established because they were uh, part of the exchange rate of skillings and um, rakes dollars. Uh, labor hours those days uh, of ten, a five, and a quarter and a half. It seems a little bit obscure to even think that they'd be a labor tokens as such. The Griqualand people had their own farms and that where they were working and if they wanted monetary exchange, they needed money to barter. It seems very improbable that they were received as labor tokens or that it was in a denomination of five and ten purely because they had it, uh, only ten fingers and they didn't have accounting understandings. The big fact, did the coinage circulate? Well, as previously stated, most of the graded coins that come through are in XF or lower denomination. They've had wear and tear. It's very hard to find one in mint state, especially with your copper uh, coinage. We also went on where they've mentioned that they did distribute the coinage. Um, and in the anthology report, you'll find more information pertaining to what we've found, which is probably most interesting. Why no denomination? Queen Elizabeth was quite clear the Great Recoinage Act of 1816 prohibited the minting of private coins and the London Mission Society had to be very careful of how they went about making coins and I think one of the methods of doing that was not putting a denomination on those coins purely because of that. A few people believe that the Skirpius Guild in 1802 was the first coinage of South Africa. That is not true. That uh, coinage that was issued for the Cape was because of the Batavia Republic. It uh, fell off, uh, was just formed part of a province that was part of the Batavia uh, government at the time. And the Griqualand coinage is the first established coinage. And um, it arrived in South Africa in 1817. Although it may have been minted from October to December 1816 in England. In terms of your NGC, PCGS, Sangs and auction houses, uh, previously they were referencing as a token. Um, and you can see there's been a massive change as they've now regraded them as coinage. Information. You can read as an attachment here is the Rix Dollar and Foreign Exchange by Brian Cantor. Uh, there's many documents uh, or information on chat boards, uh, bid or buy forum. There's also on Wikipedia the Greek or coinage. There's also the Anne Stewart anthology report, which is a, a, attached. I recommend going through that and reading it to get a better understanding. Uh, as for Greek coinage and reasons for 10 and 5 denominations, there's again on the bid or buy forum, there's a link to that. There's some history on the Greek land people, their land, and uh, probably one of the two is Reverend Campbell's Travels in Africa, 1815. And a book that's worth reading is C.L. Engelbrecht, Geld in South Africa. Uh, Geld in South Africa means uh, money in South Africa, which was published in 1987. Contributors and acknowledgements. I'd like to thank Anne Stewart, uh, MA, um, Alan Jacob, Pierre Nokia, Anthony Govender, Brian Hearn, and Mike Klee.